Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, my guest today has been on the show before. Her name is Susanna Hall. She's lost even more weight since being on the show. She's a mom of eight. So far, she's lost 72 pounds. She's taken several of my programs, including the Reboot program. Reboot. She's Canadian, so I'm saying Reboot instead of Reboot, which is going to start again next week. And I'll have all the information below in the show notes and in the chat if you're interested in learning more about it. But both of us recently got back from Rancho La Puerta in Mexico, where we had this wonderful retreat with 35 like-minded people. If you're interested, we have openings next month in August and some next year as well. And, you know, I've been working in this space of weight loss and food addiction for about 15 years now. And so many people say, you know, Chef AJ, I, I, I eat exactly like you and I can't lose weight. And most of the time, these people don't eat remotely like me. But I got to say, Susanna does. I sat with her at almost every meal. And she's a girl after my heart. Double, triple salads. She does everything right. And there's a lot to learn from her. Please welcome her back to the show. It's great to see you again virtually. Uh, you too. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Um, so I thought I'd just kind of give you a rundown of, of my story. And, uh, and then I'll bring up some slides and show, you know, sort of, sort of show everybody where I've been in the last, what I've been up to the last two years and how I've, how I've been successful on your program. I so, can't wait. I, and you know, you, you were like every single day at Rancho, well, except for, I think one day, you know, the last day, cause I, I got up at like ridiculous, like five o'clock to spin. You joined me in the spin room. Yeah, that was really fun to get our hour in of spinning because I was missing my bike here at home. So yeah. I got a bonus. <laughs> you know, yesterday when I gave the lecture to Feel Fabulous, one of the one of the slides basically said exercise is a non-negotiable. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, there's some days where it just can't happen with with my life. I get really, really busy, but for most days I really need it. Yeah. So yeah, I so love. I love that, you know, you, 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 you know, people say it's so difficult and I, I guess, you know, in some ways it is, but sometimes the alternative can be more difficult, but you know, you, you have eight kids is quite a bit. Quite a passel. Yeah. yeah. I've got, I've got seven, eight or nine of us around the dinner table still. Summers are actually really quite busy because I've got three guys home from university. So, so things slow down in the fall a little bit, but um, yeah, so I, I grew up with healthy, happy little kid. I I was pretty active as a kid. I I did eat a standard American diet and um, you know, have lots of memories of candy and cakes and cookies. And I was I was a real sweet tooth. I know now that I was addicted and probably spent my whole life high on sugar. I just realized that a couple of months ago. Um, you know, I I'm 56. I live up in Vancouver, Canada, and um, my kids age in rage from 16 to 31. One girl and seven boys. So wow. we're, we're a busy family. Uh, we When we got married in 1989, I married my university sweetheart. And uh, just one year after his after we got married, he got testicular cancer. And that was a really scary time. I Quit my I was working on my master's degree in education I, I I dropped out of that to help him and then we decided we'd better hustle up and have some kids didn't think it would be eight but uh yeah so with each of those babies I I gained a lot of weight I mean I gained 15 pounds about overnight when he got the cancer diagnosis and then that first pregnancy I gained 50 pounds and uh uh, by the time I had my fourth child, my husband had gotten into running. And so he ran a marathon and, and I kind of caught on too. And so I actually got back to my ideal weight once in there um, and ran a 10 K at seven weeks pregnant with my fourth child, but never saw, never saw that weight again. That was uh, 25 years ago. So I went on to have four more babies. I had actually interspersed in their seven miscarriages. So a lot of difficult things going on too, you know, grief going through all these times and very busy with the family. And we also homeschool. So, so it was just, just been really, really, that's where all this gray hair came from. Anyway, I spent years doing yo-yo diets. I, I'm, uh, uh, 
recurrent Weight Watchers member. I've tried Body for Life, um, Trim Healthy Mama, The Grapefruit Diet, Whole30, Jenny Craig. I even hired a private trainer for two years and I lost five whole pounds that time. And uh, so kind of kind of gave up. And in, in February of 2015, I actually fell like I was at a shopping mall and there was like little low gardens and the dirt dropped about this much from the sidewalk and I didn't see it and it was dark out. And so I got avulsion fractures in my ankle, had to have it pinned back together. And, um, you know, then in this, in that time, then I was just eating everything. <laughs> and, uh, six months later I had a disc, a uh, bulging disc in my neck and, um, my weight had shot up so much that they uh, they informed me my BMI was 33 at this point, and they said they couldn't do the surgery. And I was absolutely gutted. I will never forget that morning. I was so ashamed and embarrassed and and also devastated that I couldn't um, get out of pain. I was on a lot of drugs for the pain. And anyway, so I, I looked up some stuff, found paleo and um was able to quickly lose, I think I had to lose 10 pounds or something to get into the, the BMI range. Um, so from 2015 to 2020, I, I basically ate whatever I wanted and ballooned up to almost 260 pounds. Now I am five foot 11, so I can carry that a little better. I'm down around 186 to 188 now. And my BMI is around 25, but I hit a 36 and a half BMI at that point. Um, right in the first month where the COVID pandemic hit North America, my husband was getting some routine blood work and found out that he, 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 the doctor had been watching his, um, cholesterol and stuff. And, and he'd finally hit the point where he felt it was time for him to go on statins and we didn't want that. So we did things like got some books and got out our, our, uh, our um, Forks Over Knives DVD and stuff like that. And for that first year from 2020 to 2021, I lost 15 pounds. So, you know, it was kind of, kind of sloppy diet, um, but, you know, taking out the animal products, especially the dairy was helping, but it just wasn't quite enough. And I was like, well, if, it, if it's, if I'm going to lose at this rate, it's going to take me like eight years to lose all this weight. And, and I know that it's not healthy for me to be obese. And then in February, 2021, I stumbled upon your truth about weight loss summit. And boy, I, that's where it all turned to start to turn around for me. I took notes. I watched episodes two and three times. I played them for my husband. And, and most of all, I think I felt like, where has this information been? I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a reader and a researcher and I hadn't found anything like this. And so, yeah, so basically for the, for the last two years, I've been, um, working on this and, and I don't know, I don't know where my weight is going to stop. I know I asked you that at the ranch. And I think that, that, you know, I'm just comfortable eating this way now. And I think that was kind of key was to get to the point where, where I've realized that I'm not going to be eating hyper palatable processed foods any, anymore, ever. They're not good for me. They're not nutritious. And yeah, so that's what I'm working on. And I, this just happened the other day. I, uh, my, my son-in-law has a weighted blanket. Oh, can you see it? <laughs> it's quite heavy. This is, this is a 35 pound weighted blanket. And so if I imagine myself getting up out of bed in the morning I had two of these on me every day. No wonder I was so exhausted all the time because that is how I started my day. So I'm going to share my screen. Mm -hmm. and show you mentioned you. that, you know, you mentioned, no, these foods aren't good for me. And you, you sound like you've given them up forever. Was there a little grieving process going on when you felt you had to there give was, them up? There was, um, I that up okay um yeah but perfect. you know as I get farther and farther away from it it's easier because I just uh, my food tastes so good now and and it didn't for a long time I have to admit that 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 I was like I don't know how you guys are all saying this oh it tastes so good I love my vegetables but you know I just sort of trusted the process and 
kept kept going and and by golly now I'm saying the same thing <laughs> so this is me on the right when I, I was a little kid I was just it was everything was good um went through my teen years I was I was really um at about this age I went to my family doctor because I all my girlfriends were little and short and and tiny petite girls and I have I've always been so big even now I still am when I look at some of the pictures of, you know, group shots from the ranch and there's like everybody else. And then there's me, but you know, that's just my body. I can't change it. So I, my family doctor measured my wrists and my ankles or something and said, I had the bone structure of a large man. So I can't change that. Um, this is, this is when we got married. And, uh, and as I mentioned, it was just a year later that I fell into obesity. And so this is in 91. So just two years later. So it only took me two years to get so much bigger um, than my wedding picture. You can see here my small head and my big body. That's my first child there. And then this next one is when I had it now eight children. And, you know, I was happy. I've had a wonderful life. I adore my husband and my children. But the, this weight is like the one thing that I just couldn't figure out. So this is in 2015. Actually, at this event was for my husband's work. I actually had on a boot cast <laughs> under this fancy dress. That was when I had broken my ankle. And uh, here we are on vacation. And I can just see how big I am here. Christmas 2017. another somebody's birthday, I think. And yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I remember this picture, my, you know, my, we were away on a little holiday and my husband said, Oh, let me take your picture. And I was like, don't take my picture. Like, cause I know how bad I look, but you know, yeah, here I'm just, um, with some of my kids and a friend, that's my friend on the left. And, and, uh, you can see I'm like twice the size of everybody else. I'm so big. My legs are big and I carry it all over, right? I've got it in my face and my arms and my neck everywhere. I always wore big gauzy skirts to hide, hide underneath. Same with here. And you can see my big legs there. <laughs> and yeah, this is a, a trip we took for our 30th anniversary. And yeah, I've said, I know I've said this before, but I thought I was looking pretty good here, <laughs> but, but you know, it's July and I'm dressed all in black and, and I'm just trying to hide, right? This, I put this in here because, you know, I look pretty happy in those other pictures, but you know, that expression, like happy on the outside, crying on the inside, this picture is more representative of how I felt. So then what I've done is just put together a few before and after, so you can kind of see side by side the difference. So this is uh, the one on the left is in 2019 and the one on the right is just a month and a half ago. And I feel like a new person. <laughs> I just, I absolutely feel amazing. I have so much energy. Uh, I can get up early in the morning, do all my things all day long and keep going at night. You know, here's that. I put that same picture in and we had this event after the COVID again and a uh, similar dress. And I, I, I couldn't, when I saw this, you know, cause we don't have a full length mirror here. So when I saw myself in the hotel mirror, I was actually shocked because I, I, I never thought I'd see this size again. This one you can see on the left, this was in 2005. And then the one on the right is just a couple of weeks ago. I know it's a little grainy, but you know, who wants a lot of pictures taken of you when you're that big, right? On the left is in 2020. And the right is just uh, last fall in 2022. I feel a lot more comfortable in a bathing suit. I still don't embrace it, but you know, I, I, I'm more comfortable. And yeah, you can see in this one, just how big my neck and my jowls and, and just 
so different. It's a similar, similar pose and they're about two years apart. This one, I just threw this in because this is the first time I put on size eight jeans in my fifties. I just can't believe that this is, this was just in February of this year. And I can't believe they fit. I'm sure they were missized or they'd made a mistake, except for then we went to a different store and I tried on a size eight in a different store and they also fit. So I guess they're, they're not missizing them. I also fit the robes in the hotels. Now I can even tie it up. Not that I'm big on wearing robes, but you know, to go down to the pool. So instead of holding on to what I could have done, I'm taking action to what I can do now. So I just try to not sort of live in the past. If anybody's curious, this um, uh, one of our success coaches, Pam, gave us the um, told us about this. It's called I Am, and it's an app that has these free the um, messages that pop up into your phone. So this is sort of this section is sort of what I eat and and what I do. So I start. And this is all based on your teaching, AJ. And so every day I start my day with VFB, which stands for vegetables for breakfast. So when you truly understand what to eat, you don't have to worry about how much you eat. And that is a quote from you. And that is the beauty of this program for me is that I can eat as much food as I want within certain parameters and not ever go outside of those parameters. And, and I eat, very, as you mentioned at the start, I eat very large volumes of food. Um, and yet I continue to either, you know, maintain or lose the weight that I did lose. So I go out to my garage fridge in the morning and I get a big arm load of vegetables and I stand and chop it all up. This is, um, this is all for me. This, <laughs> this whole big cutting board is all what I'm going to eat for breakfast that day. You can see behind is um, a bag. It's got some condensation. But what I do is I put all my trimmings into bags. And then when I've got enough, like probably two bags worth, I, I uh, cook those down into, into vegetable stock. And it's delicious. So yeah, that's all those vegetables into that big pan. And I, I put the heat. Well, on my cooktop goes up to high, I put it at seven and I preheat the pan. And uh, when it's good and hot, then I drop everything in and uh, kind of move it around with a wooden spatula and nothing burns and it doesn't stick. So yeah, I just pop the lid on there and let it steam up a little bit. While I wait, I usually give my little dog something. <laughs> And then when it's done, I've just uh, fallen in love with California balsamic. Um, before the pandemic, I was able to get uh, some stuff up here in Canada. So if you don't live in a country where you can get California balsamic, you can um, find an olive oil store and they, they usually also have balsamic vinegars, flavored balsamic vinegars and yeah so there there's my big serving of vegetables I start every day with this and then this day I also um, took all the frozen stuff you know it's bits of stuff that that aren't bad they're not turned but they're sort of past the point where anybody's going to eat them and I fill that pot up with water and probably about two or three inches above it and then I throw in a bunch of spices I think this time I've got oregano, cumin seeds, um, granulated garlic, peppercorns, and Benson's Table Tasty, which is a really fantastic salt substitute. Um, and then, yeah, once it's cooked, then I put the colander in the sink and pour it through so to catch all the vegetables and make sure you put a bowl underneath, ask me how I know this. One time I worked so hard to make all this stock and put the colander in the sink and down the drain went all my lovely soup. <laughs> so, and then I even take this wooden spatula and press it to get all the good juices out of the veggies. And then I scoop it into, these are called super cubes. Um, I was slow, a slower adopter of super cubes, but I actually really like them. Um, and you just put everything in there, freeze it up, and then they pop out. And 
then I pop them. It fits eight of the one cup into a large Ziploc bag. And then you can reuse your super cubes right away. Sometimes I'm too busy to have a stand and chopping session. And so I might throw a, a glass bowl in the microwave or in a pan of frozen vegetables. And that's what was happening on this day. And this is just another day of vegetables. So after that, either right away or when I get hungry again in about half an hour or an hour, I'll have what we call second breakfast. And so that's just my big bowl of oatmeal and usually berries. Usually I have about two cups of oats because somebody asked me, so I actually measured it. I don't normally measure it, but, but it's about two cups cooked. There's a different day. And again, and that this is your um, flafuti, which is a really nice um, dessert, but you can also have it for, for breakfast if you feel like more of a baked oatmeal kind of flair. So yeah, so snacks, something that makes you sick is not a treat. And so I make sure that my snacks are things like nice cream. Here's just a little recipe for nice cream, lots of fruit. I often have fruit for a snack. Thank you, California, for the huge strawberries this spring. Um, I love to try new fruits and vegetables. This is dragon fruit. And the next one, this is called granadilla, and it's a type of passion fruit. It's fantastic. It is definitely the sweetest fruit I've had yet. And with this, the only part you eat is the seeds and the slime that goes with them. And they crunch, and it is a flavor burst. It's fantastic. And so one day you're breastfeeding and spooning organic veggies into your baby's mouth. The next your teen walks through the door, drinking a code red Mountain Dew and carrying a bag of Cheetos. Motherhood is humbling like that. So these are the kind of snacks I try to make for my kids. And I try to get ahead of it, like freeze some things so that I not always constantly cooking. So they really like your cram muffins, which is great. I put um, homemade hummus in the bottom of um, a little rubber make container and then stand up veggies and I'll stick that in their lunches and, and things. Um, fruit. Yeah, being a mom means never buying the right amount of produce. Either everyone suddenly loves grapes and a week's worth are eaten in one afternoon or fruit flies are congregating around my rotten bananas. There's no middle ground. So I pull my grapes off the stem. You had a guest once. And, and so I tried it and you know what? Everybody eats the grapes when they're off the stem and not sitting in the fridge in a bag with the dried out brown stems. I wash them, I put them out and they're always gone. So dinners, these are just a small sampling of some of the things I've made. That's like a, a chili with um, sweet potatoes in it and a uh, salad with a, um, Tammy Kramer's Caesar dressing. This is a bok choy and rice with um, a sauce that I made with coconut aminos and rice vinegar. This is a this is just so simple. Um, a can of beans, tomatoes, cilantro, and garlic, and some corn and rice. So easy. Here I've got a tofu scramble, some veggies, and some potatoes. The potatoes have Benson's Table Tasty on them. This is some um, tempeh that I cooked up in a little sauce that I made. Uh, here's another night of beans and rice and salad. We eat a lot of bowls and salads, especially in the summer. And they're huge. You know, this is my head beside my big bowl. Um, shout out to Broccoli Mom. I got this idea from her website to use um, to make sushi. And so you just, um, I got the bamboo rollers from Amazon and then just lay out a sheet of nori. And then I add cucumber, carrot shreds, tofu strips, and then just dip it in coconut aminos. And they're just, they're fantastic. They're super easy to make. Everybody's so impressed. <laughs> uh, this is refried beans, bell peppers, and homemade corn tortillas. Uh, this, we were having a barbecue, so that's why it's on a paper plate. And I had on the left made some patties and just, um, iceberg lettuce bun and a salad and potatoes. This is just how I do my asparagus, just with a drizzle of balsamic glaze and in the oven for 
20 minutes at 400 and everybody loves it. So I, I serve a lot more fruit and vegetables now. Here's just another, we often have bowl night and I'll put like little bowls out on the island of all kinds of stuff so people can make their own like that. So one of the keys to my success has been batch cooking. And I was resistant to batch cooking because I don't like leftovers. I am a novelty seeker, according to Dr. Lyle. Um, but I realized that I do need to batch cook because that's the ingredients for my next meal. So I can pull together a meal really quickly. So we've got acorn squash. I, I make my own plant milk. This is, this is sort of for five or six days for my husband and I. Oh, I didn't say that, that my husband and I and my daughter eat this way and my sons do not, but I'm working on, <laughs> this is potatoes that I steamed in the instant pot at bedtime. I'm soaking some soybeans to make soy milk and I've got oat groats cooking overnight. And then this is some soy yogurt that I made. Um, something new that I've started doing, uh, last time I showed, I had just made, um, sheets of, cooking times for the instant pot of things, grains and beans that I make. And you know what, it's even easier if you actually just write on the container. So instant pot one to one ratio for one minute. And that's for quinoa is so easy. So I always keep quinoa in the fridge and I always have a large Ziploc bag. It freezes great. So then I have it ready. I can microwave it for a minute or two, like a break off a chunk. I regrow my green onions now and uh, I'm not much of a gardener, but it's something I can do. Um, so there's some of my batch cooking ready for ready for a new meal. This is chickpeas that I cooked. These are some patties. And yeah, so on the go, I have a lot of my kids are in sports. And so I'm on the go a lot. I know everybody's got their own things that keep them busy. You have to take food with you. If your choices are beautiful, so too will you be. And boy, that has been really key for me. I feel most of all, when I go out is when I really need my internal audience to be with me. I, that feeling of uh, disappointment in myself if, if I've eaten off plan. So now I prevent that by taking food with me and I feel like they're cheering me on. <laughs> so I picked up a, um, a couple of different sizes of cooler bags to take with me here. I'm at the water slides with my son and I've got my, that my, uh, oatmeal here. I've got a salad with some dressing. Oh yeah. That, in the background there, that's my bigger red cooler. Um, they had water stations, so I kept myself hydrated. I always take a water bottle with me now wherever I go. This was the offering for the student meals. So no, I did not let my son buy this. I brought food for him. But I saw this and I took a picture because I thought, my goodness, two or three years ago, I would have been oh, well, I guess I'll have the chicken strip meal with fries and the fountain drink. And, you know, I would have had a stomach ache and, but I would have felt happiness for about one minute while I was eating it. And then the whole rest of the time I would have felt let that I've let myself down. And so, you know, I put this in to remind me to say, um, just to pick up on that thread is that, um, on your, on your, this YouTube show, there was somebody in one of the chats said that they kept a little notebook and, and wrote down quotes from, from some of your guests. And so I wrote this one down. I just think it's fantastic from Vera Tarman. Persistent cravings are a sign that some food is still sparking the addictive pathway. Cheating by having a spoonful here or a bite there is also an excellent way to suffer withdrawal in perpetuity. Withdrawal will not end if the substance is constantly being introduced into the brain reward pathway. And that has been key for me to learn. That's why I didn't fall victim to the student meals because then I'm just, I have to start all the way back again. And so it's easier. Abstinence is easier for me now. I never thought I'd be able to say that. This is at a hotel. This is my order of, for breakfast in room service. Two bowls of fruit and two bowls of oatmeal. This is at my son's graduation a couple of weeks ago. Like our homeschool organization has a graduation. And so 
we were able to get um, veggies and fruit from the buffet table. But beforehand, we sat in the car and I had made huge salads with starch and a dressing. And so having that little bit of vegetables and fruit was just enough to feel social at the group table that we were at without, without falling off my plan. This is at a hotel we were at that had um, like a little kitchenette. And so I have the silver bowl there and, and I, I buy those boxes of greens. So I dumped that in, dumped in a can of beans with the pop top. And then I had, um, you can often buy a little paring knife in the produce section. So I bought a little paring knife and cut up some veggies and some grapes. And it was a great salad. It was great. This is like another meal on the go. I just, I've just gotten in the habit and, and um, here, here's another one. One time we were at in another province and um, we were at a restaurant. So I, I knew where we were going and it's called Boston pizza. So I looked it up and I found that. So what I said is I'm on a very restricted diet and wondered if I could order the salmon power bowl without the salmon. Could I replace the salmon with a meal sized garden salad underneath the ingredients of the salmon power bowl and just charge me what you think is fair. So in the salmon power bowl, I saw there was quinoa and like a few things like that, that weren't in the meal sized garden salad. So when the waiter, so I'm getting more confident as I go on with this. So when the waiter came around the table, he took everybody's order and he got to me and I, I, I had written this note out in advance and, and I turned to him and I said, I want a really special diet. Can I give you this note and maybe just take it back and share it with the kitchen staff? And if there's any problem, just come and talk to me. And I didn't take a picture because I'd already made a bit of a scene. Well, I didn't want to stick out like too much. And so I didn't get a picture of my salad, but it was great. I felt very satisfied. Here I am out again, eating some berries. This is at um one of my older sons graduated from university this spring, and but it was like a three or four hour ceremony. So this is when we were there and this is me eating my potatoes at the graduation. Nobody cared. <laughs> this is um one of my sons is currently playing beach volleyball and it was like a three hour thing in a town too far away to come back home. So I packed up my dinner. I actually took my computer to work on this presentation and, uh, and sat there, put on some nice music and, and ate my dinner. And, you know, when I was all done, the sun was setting, they were still playing. And I took this picture because I just felt, I felt so contented, you know, my uh, experiencing that calm, stable brain that you talk about is just, it's just so important to me. I value that so much. Another time my, uh, one of my sons plays rugby. And so I sat in the car, it was a very hot day. Um, and it had been a very busy day and then it cooled off and I, you know, I sat in the car and ate my salad. It looks like oil, but it's not, I don't eat any oil. This is balsamic vinegar on top. And, you know, I took this picture and I was just, I was just so happy because all these things were things that I would have missed. When I was so big and so heavy, I, you can tell it's evening and it's cooled off. And I was just too exhausted from carrying around two weighted blankets. Uh, this is at another tournament packing up in the more in the night before another tournament. I've got refried beans, corn tortillas, vegetables for breakfast, an apple and some leftover clafuti. This is at an airport. Um, I had to ask for no dressing and no feta cheese, but boy, I was really happy about that. And this is also in an airport. This is on the way to Rancho. I had to, again, take off the feta cheese and the dressing, but I was pretty happy with that. And this was at the airport. We just pulled out the ranch dip was in a little container. So we chucked that out. I mean, it was $11 for this little tiny thing of vegetables. But the thing is when you fly between Canada and the US, you can't bring any food at all. Uh, also found in an airport, pineapple chunks. So movement, as you mentioned at the start, you know, movement was really not part of my life um, when I was obese. It, it was all I could do just to get down the stairs in the morning. Now I, like I've even been out for a half an hour bike ride this morning before, before coming in here. I, this is when I was um, visiting my son in Alberta and it was 
minus 15 Celsius, which we figured out is about five degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm the one who said, hey, do you guys want to go for a walk? <laughs> and it was bitterly cold out and very windy. You can tell my face is quite red there. Um, going out for walks and seeing blossoms and things like that. These are just not things that I was doing. This is a, a hike down a hill near our house. It was just a beautiful, beautiful fall day. My hat says Vancouver vegan. Um, you know, and I can navigate all these, you know, steps and paths and things now, which I couldn't do before. And we made it all the way down to the beach and can, you know, I can walk out and, and enjoy the smells and the sounds. And this is um, up in Whistler, which is where the 2010 Olympics were. This, um, this hike slash walk we've been going there for 17 years taking our kids and little holidays and day trips and things and I've never done this hike and I did it and it was you know just really really wonderful day with my husband um in 2020 uh when I had started you know with forks over knives and getting myself going um I had heard about e-bikes and I thought, you know, that could be a good solution for me because my town is pretty hilly. And so going on a bike was just not fun because I would get so sweaty and uncomfortable and I couldn't had to get off and walk up the hills. And so the e-bike was kind of a, a solution for that. So this is the day I got it. This is a year later, and this is actually um, in the spring. So AJ, I think I had started with you at this point because it was February, 2021 that I saw, and you can see I've got kale and all kinds of things there. And this is this winter. Um, I get out there when it's, I think my coldest ride has been two Celsius. So I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but um, yeah, I, I just see the most beautiful things now that that I was missing. I was missing so much of life. And, you know, this is just by my library. I see these beautiful views. Um, I, I go and get my produce. This vest was my son's. Um, when I first started riding, um, it's a men's medium. And when I first started riding, I would wear this to, you know, if it was rainy or dark ish. I don't ride in the dark, but if it's sunset or whatever, I would put this on just to, just to make myself noticeable. And, um, I couldn't zip it up. So I put it on even over a t-shirt and I just leave it flapping open. And this spring, this is actually this spring I can zip it up and it's loose and I have a sweatshirt on. So that's quite a change. Just another viewpoint. I see lots of bunnies on my bike rides. And every time I see one, I say, hi, bunny. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, just these little things that bring me joy now that that weren't just weren't a part of my life. And stopping in the park, there was these little tiny wildflowers. Um, I actually have passed 7,000 kilometers ridden now. When I when I put this into the talk, I, I'd written, ridden 6,500, which I figured out is about 4,300 miles for you Americans stopping to this one street had all these trees at the blossoms coming down. It was just gorgeous. This is at the post office. So I run my errands and I track down little tiny libraries on my ride. And I, you know, these are where you can take a book or leave a book. And so, and here I had ridden to a, the library and then a doctor's appointment. That's my bike in the background. And, and I was half an hour early because I didn't know how long it was going to take me. So I sat and read Brenda Davis's new book, some of her new book. And when it's really lousy out, I'll get on my spin bike, but that's not my favorite. <laughs> so this is interesting because with, um, you know, with my last interview with you in the summit in February, I had a section called adversity. And when I was putting this together, I was like, why am I having struggles trying to think about the adversity? And then it came to me a couple of weeks ago that it's, my mindset has changed and it has changed from facing adversity to being resilient. And so that kind of, kind of was neat to realize that, you know, I mean, even just yesterday. So my home has, uh, instead of a hot water tank, I have a boiler. And so, cause we have in floor heating and, um, 
all the sinks and showers and stuff all run off this one system called a boiler and it died yesterday morning. So I've had no water, no hot water since yesterday. And it's supposed to be done by the end of today, but it's this huge expense, huge unexpected stress, but it's okay. It's just a, it's just a boiler. Everybody's fine. Um, so this is something that happened. Um, yeah. So I looked up the meaning of resilience, the capacity to withstand or recover quickly from difficulties. And even, interestingly, the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape, which is almost kind of a little analogy to what's happened to me. So a couple of weeks ago, my son was in a pretty bad car accident. He's okay. And it wasn't his fault, but um, he just had a few bumps and bruises, but the car was spun around in a 180. The car is totaled um, you can see all the airbags deployed. And I got a text saying, Ben's been in a car accident. And I knew what Rudy was going. So, I mean, if I could have driven 200 miles an hour down my road, I would have. But I just wanted to get there and see that he was okay. And when I got there, he was standing on the curb. So, but, you know, just very, very stressful things. And this is key for me. Toxic eating on a hard day is the same as using drugs to feel better. It's harmful. It's addictive. It's temporary and ultimately makes things worse. Thank you, Dr. Goldner. This is, you know, I'll, you could be frustrated with this. This is just my front door one day. And I, I walked around the corner and I had a chuckle because like, I guess everybody was home. <laughs> I could, I can choose to get really frustrated with this, or I can just be happy that I have all these people in my life and that they're home and they're with me. And so I choose joy. Don't wait for things to get easier, simpler, and better. Life will always be complicated. Learn to be happy right now. Otherwise you'll run out of time. Thank you, Dr. Esser. So some of my things that I have to be resilient about this is my kids had, you know, I don't buy this stuff anymore as a rule, but they had come home with some barbecued potato chips. And there, I just thought the, the irony of me sitting there eating my healthy salad and their chips. Another time they came home with two dozen donuts right there in front of me. And here the next morning, I can see that I'm trying to watch chef AJ there on my computer and eat my vegetables. And I've got donuts and flaming hot Cheetos facing me down. And, um, you know, interestingly, AJ, you, you said to me, you got to tell the kids, <laughs> you know, when you've said this many times, like in your house, in your mouth, I know all this, but, but this is my environment. And and I am an agreeable personality. So I'm not, I'm not going to bring down the hammer on this stuff. But what I did after when I had shared that picture with you with the two dozen donuts and you said, put it in the trash compactor. <laughs> um, you know, I had a, a conversation with my 20 year old and I said, how what would it be like if I took the things that you guys eat like bread and nuts and things, things that are healthy, but they're not good for me. Um, what if I put those in a cupboard in our laundry room and then you guys could access them there and then I don't have to see them all the time. And, you know, I've been at this with you for two years and a bit. And he said something interesting. He said, that still bothers you like having those foods out. And I said, yeah, it actually does. It's really hard. Every time I see these things, it wakes up that addictive pathway. So just interesting to have these conversations with your kids, you know, they're, they're wise. Um, this was a big birthday party that we had. And I just stuck this in here. It probably doesn't fit in this section, but I wanted to put it anyway, because you can see my back that I'm lumpy there. <laughs> and, you know, I have lots of loose skin and I just figure, you know, it's my battle scars. They're not, it's not going to go away this is my body. Now I was very harsh on my body for a lot of years, almost 30 years. And so I just, you know, I want to be completely myself so that everyone else feels safe to be themselves too. This, yes, I put a picture of myself in a paper gown at the doctor's office because something else I wanted to be resilient about was I, I, I was going in to get, um, you know, full physical exam and get all my blood work. I don't have any chronic illnesses or anything yet, 
Um, and hopefully I don't, but I, I felt like I needed, you know, I'm 56. So I felt like it's probably time for me to have a baseline. And, you know, my doctor said, because I haven't seen him since before the pandemic, he said, he said he gets about two patients a year out of a thousand that are able to do what I was able to do. So that was really cool. So what I've got here is just, um, these are my results. And so the number on the left is my number and the number on the right is the, uh, the standard. So you can see that my cholesterol, my triglycerides, my vitamin D, um, B12 is normal, iron is normal. Uh, and this is my, I think you guys call it your A1C. My A1C is 4.4. So I was really happy about that. Um, yeah, this is just my son's volleyball team. We travel all over the place. And here we were at this big national tournament in another province. And we had to get up every day at 5.50. That's not my normal waking time. I know some people are morning people. I'm not. But, you know, I tried to find the beauty in it. And this was the view out our hotel room. I got to see the sunrise every day. And it was gorgeous. I also was able to visit with one of my really special friends lives in the province we were visiting and haven't seen her in over a year. And, you know, we'd gotten up at 515. Us parents are putting out food for all the kids and moving them between games, all like six games in a day doing these group dinners, like where I did the power, got the salmon power bowl. And yet I still had the energy to go and visit my dear friend. And that was just really special to me to that. I, I was able to do that. I had to drive almost an hour back into town from the hotel to do that, but well worth it. So this is my last section that my story can be your story. I just wish I could sit down with everybody with a cup of my herbal tea and, and have a chat because this is how I feel. I know I don't look like this anymore, but this is me when, when I graduated university, I think I'm 21. Here or something. These are some of the things that I do to keep myself motivated. I, these are some of the books that I've listened to recently on audible metabolical, uh, food junkies. I just highly recommend this book. Uh, Forgive to live was excellent. Uh, Burn by Herman Ponser was a great book. And the oldest cure in the world is actually funny. You wouldn't think that this looks like a funny book, but the, the, the writer is excellent. And listening to it in audible, I think brought out the humor for me. Uh, one thing I love to do is to, um, I don't know if people know that on True North Health Center, they have free True North Health TV. And every Monday at two o'clock Pacific, Dr. Goldhammer speaks for like two hours and it's a little different every week. So it's fantastic. And often he is promoting uh, and encouraging people to go check out Chef AJ. So that's kind of neat. I have like encouraging words on my computer. The one in the middle here, I pointed out You've always had the power, my dear. You just had to learn it for yourself. And that's from the Wizard of Oz. And the one on the bottom left, don't look back. You're not going that way. So I am in the process of becoming the best version of myself. One of the things that I have is a, this little bracelet. It's, it's my left of the red line. On the back of Chef AJ's book is... Um, uh, her calorie density chart. And that's the red line. So for me, I keep it on my wrist, then I see it. And so I, this is from your desserts course, I printed out um, the recipes and put them in a binder and it was out on the counter. And so I kind of feel like you're there with me. <laughs> this is um, just a, a saying from the National Health Association, Herbert Shelton, I put this up on my fridge, health results from healthful living. There's your cookbook reminding me to stay on my plan. These are some of the, my most used cookbooks. Um, I just laid them all out together. Um, almost all of them are completely compliant and most of them, you can make a simple substitution. This is, um, I put this in because my daughter gave me this t-shirt that she found when she was out at something. And, you know, the thing is, 
uh, after two years, my kids know this is how I eat. There's no second guessing. Nobody offers me things anymore. Like, oh, mom, I had this chocolate bar. Nobody does that anymore. It's finally over. <laughs> so at a farmer's market, I bought some dairy-free uh, flavored cream cheese for my kids to try on some of the vegan crackers that I have. And they loved it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to recreate it. So I went online and kind of fudged around with a few recipes and was able to produce a reasonable facsimile, put it in the same jar back in the fridge, and they thought I bought more. So, you know, just finding these little things that I can do to insert health into their diet. This is one of your desserts, AJ, that my kids are quite happy with with your desserts now. These are some banana oat cookies. This is that, um, I can't remember what this one's called. Um, <laughs> peanut one butter paradise parfait. Thank you. Um, that was a hit. That was a real hit. Um, so I began to realize how important it was to be an enthusiast in life. If you are interested in something, no matter what it is, go at it full speed, embrace it with both arms, hug it, love it, and above all, become passionate about it. Lukewarm is no good. So this motto has really helped me to, uh, to embrace everything that I'm doing here. Trust your hard work. It's unlocking doors that you can't see yet. And for me, these are the kind of things that I didn't know I was missing. Beautiful sunsets out on my bike. Recently, um, I was asked to share my testimonial in the National Health Association magazine called Health Science. And this just came out like two weeks ago, right when the conference was on. And I, I've, I'm still stunned to see my story in print. And I just hope that you know, even one person can read this or, or watch this interview and, and have just a, a shred of hope that maybe they can, they can do this too. I didn't think I could do this. And I didn't think it would be me. <laughs> that would be the success story here. I'd had a full and busy day already. And my daughter and son-in-law um, have like a little antiques shop, antiques and collectibles and said, Hey, do you want to come in tonight and help us get ready for Christmas? And I was like, sure. And like, I, I had my daughter take this picture specifically to put in here because I can't believe I can do this stuff. I had no energy to do this stuff here. My son and daughter-in-law were moving. And so my daughter and I went over at 5 30, 6 in the morning to clean the new place. And then everybody else brought all the boxes over. And, you know, we made a big fruit platter and, you know, brought granola bars and things. So yeah, this is this is dancing at my son's wedding. I mean, you know, I know you say, you know, you don't want to have like a specific, like, oh, I need to lose 20 pounds in time for my son's wedding. This was just a happy byproduct <laughs> that I also did lose 70 pounds before my son's wedding, but that wasn't why I did it. But, um, you know, here it's at like 11 o'clock at night. It's near the end of the night. And we had started at just before six that morning. I had hosted... Uh, the all the guys, the groomsmen, and the best man, and the and the groom got dressed at our home. So I had a big breakfast for them, and then had to get myself ready and my family ready and go to the wedding and do the dinner and the family and everything. And then here we are, late, late at night, dancing. And the first time I yawned was in the car on the way home, just after eleven. In this shot, I I my sons play rugby in university and one, two of them were being honored for graduating and, and, you know, they had flowers for the moms and stuff. And, you know, I just felt so darn good that day. I, I still can't believe that I would have been missing all these kind of things and would have been watching them online. I've um, been, you know, donating stuff. BB is just for um, big brothers and they'll come around and pick up box boxes of stuff. And so I'm cleaning out my home and getting myself more organized. Oh, that was not supposed to be there twice. And yeah, the last little section here is just some pictures from Rancho La Puerta, which was absolutely stunning experience for me last week. Take rest, a field that has rested yields a bountiful crop. And that was sort of my purpose of going was, was for a rest. We had these beautiful meals. This is um, on the top left there. One day at, by the pool, there was an omelet station. So I asked if she could um, 
make me an omelet with, I didn't explain it this way, but basically an eggless omelet, right? So I had the spinach and the peppers and the tomatoes and the onions and asked if she could use no oil. And that was my delicious breakfast. Here's another meal um, at the ranch. Well, part of one, I had way more food than that. Just beautiful flowers and gardens everywhere. And I loved being in your cooking classes and cooking alongside you. That was really fun. And I did some jewelry making. Actually, I'm wearing that today. Um, the hearts to represent my family. And I did a, uh, another art class, which was making mandalas. And I learned about that. So that was just another fun thing. This is the beautiful uh, floral display up at the cooking school. And this is, uh, I have a funny story about this. So some of the my roommates, I had said, there's no way I'm getting in a hammock because my eye doctor had fallen out of a hammock and broken her arm. And literally on the way to the bus to leave the ranch, my roommates convinced me they'd hold it steady and get me into this hammock. So that's what I'm doing there is breaking down these walls. <laughs> so yeah, here just on the plane, like I can't believe that the, the, tail of that uh seatbelt I mean I was old me would have been right at the end I never needed a seatbelt extender but I, I but I was right at the end and it was snug so so it's just so nice to to have that and then yeah just my very last slide just before I get over to it one, one of my sons found this thing um on TikTok you can make an avatar of yourself and so he was doing that for some of the other kids and all these funny pictures were coming up. And so I said, Oh, could you do that for me? So he said, yeah, just send me like whatever headshot. And so I sent one to him and, and so he produced these five, five goofy pictures, but I'll tell you this one that he did of me, I just knew that it would be the last slide of my presentation here oh my god i want one can you make me some yes That's beautiful can. yeah so oh. i don't know how they do it but i did find something that i just want to read about uh about warriors because that's how i feel so it oh. says what does it mean to be a warrior in life like a warrior the true self is courageous and unwavering determined and fierce focused and steady in order to move through the trials and busyness of life and to remain focused on moving further along the path to freedom, you need to access the true self's warrior strength. So thank you. Thank you, AJ, for giving me my life back. Oh my God. That is the most beautiful picture. Yeah. I mean, you look like a movie star. <laughs> Well, I feel like one. I feel like a movie star. That's the crazy thing. I feel so good. I, I feel like my true self. So, yeah. This okay. doesn't inspire people at least to try. Yeah. I don't know what will. Yeah. So should I stop share? Sure. And then we can see you without your movie star clothes and your warrior <laughs> outfit. Okay. <laughs> is, you know, this is, I mean, I know you, but even if I, I mean, I can imagine people that maybe will even just stumble upon this. I'm, I'm hoping it will give them hope to know that no matter how many times they've tried and have not yet succeeded, that they can get their life back and their health. And we hope to help them in the reboot program if they'll join. And, you know, the interesting thing about you and all these other interviews this week is people keep coming back even when they're at their goal weight or close to their goal weight. Yeah. Yeah. This is my fourth time taking reboot. <laughs> so the very first time I took it, I had, it was shortly after this, the first, that first summit that I had watched, but uh, I took it anyway and, and really just kind of came in more as an observer and, and hung back. But, you know, I quickly learned that the best thing I could do was turn on my camera and be engaged. And I know that, you know, yes, people are sometimes at work or, or whatever, they don't have a computer that can do the camera, but I'm telling you that has been a real key for me is, is to feel fully engaged by putting on my camera. It makes it feel more like I'm in the room with people and asking questions. I, I remember my very first time in, in the course, I, I tentatively put up my hand to ask you a question and I couldn't believe you answered. <laughs> you, you, you brought me on camera. What do you call that? Micro coaching? Yeah. Um, laser coaching, laser coaching. And you did that. And I just, I just actually couldn't believe I was talking to you. It was really exciting. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, and, and you, you really, uh, 
took Dr. Lyle's advice in so many ways, because one of the great things I think about Reboot, I wish I had had a program like that, is the three-hour extended Q&A with both Dr. Lyle one week and Dr. Goldhammer the next. And you weren't afraid to ask questions and take his advice. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Dr. Lyle has been um, understanding the pleasure trap is is one of the big keys for me, um, is that it's not my fault. It's the food. It's my environment. It's it's our world with our um, hyper palatable processed foods. It, those foods are full of chemicals and they're addictive. And that's why you can't stop. <laughs> yeah, I, it, you're just this. It just what, what's your family have to say about your success? Uh, they're pretty they're pretty happy for me. I have to say, you know, I mean, they have a much happier mom um who does things and <laughs> goes to all their events and puts up my hand to volunteer to be the parent to organize this that or the other and you know i i couldn't do that before and so but my one my my 18 year old said to me recently that sometimes he still has to do a double take when he comes around the corner and and i'm there because i'm so much smaller than i was you know i've gone from like sort of my clothes were like a size 18 really should have been a 20. And, you know, like I said, now I'm buying like a size eight and, and a medium top. And yeah, it's, it's all, I actually like shopping now. <laughs> Do you think that your kids are going to watch this presentation? I think they will. I think they will. Yeah. You're oh, going to oh. find out that you're putting homemade cream cheese in the jar. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're getting pretty, pretty brave about trying my, my new things. Like, and, and, you know, sometimes I hit on a winner, right? Like I'll, I'll hit on something and they'll be like, what is that? That's really good. And I'll be like, okay, that's going on the must make list. You know, when I know that it's something that they, that they will really like. That's so. great. Did anyone else in your family ever struggle with weight? Uh, yeah, my mom, my mom has struggled um, all her life. Um, unfortunately, you know, um, mom and dad are are kind of bearing the brunt of their those years of of abuse with that diet. So so that's hard and sad. But you know, one of my good friends that I met, and one of, I've met so many friends in your courses. <laughs> um, one of them who's who's older than me said, you know what, the best thing you can do besides just helping your parents through their own struggles is don't do the same thing to your own kids. And so that's what we're doing. We're, my husband and I are taking care of our health now so that in 20 or 30 years, they're not, my kids aren't having to pick up the pieces of our life and, you know, have us spend the last 10 years of life in poor health. Yeah. Any of them ever struggle with weight? My kids? Yeah. 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 Some of them have actually. And it's those ones that are most responsive. I think when they've seen what I've done and like, I've been able to get my kids off dairy products. And so that was really important to me after all I've learned about, about how unhealthy that is. And so, um, so, you know, I, I, hit upon a plant milk from the store that they'll, they'll drink the silk unsweetened soy milk. And so I know it's got a few things in it. So that's why I make my own for myself, but, but they'll drink that and they'll put that on their cereal and stuff. So. That's great. Had you ever heard of this no ship or concept of food addiction before reading the pleasure trap? Uh, no, because it was first the first time I was exposed to hearing about food addiction was actually in your truth about weight loss summit that first year when, um, Dr. Joan Iflin and Dr. Vera Tarman were on there. I was like, that's me. I was so surprised. And so, yeah, so it was then through your courses and, you know, uh, to just chime in on what you said, like that is one of my favorite parts of reboot is having the three hours with Dr. Lyle and three hours with Dr. Goldhammer. I never tire <laughs> Of yes. those two, you know, you came to the conference. Did you actually meet them and introduce yourself? I to did. Them? I did. Yeah, I did. They they signed my. I brought my pleasure trap book, and um, um, uh, Doctor Lyle put something like, um, 
Very nice to meet you, Susanna, from Dr. Lyle. And Dr. Goldhammer put, beware of the pleasure pleasure trap. trap. That's what he writes for everybody. Well, I don't know if people know this, but we're having another conference in Sacramento on Sunday, September 17th. Susanna is coming again, and she's actually going to be telling her story at the conference and then introducing Dr. Lyle and thanking him for all he did to help her achieve her dream body. Yeah, such such an honor and a privilege to do that. I'm very, very excited to come. Marie says, please tell Susanna what a great job she just did. I loved her story and I want her to be my motivational coach. Well, contact her because, you know, she may get into coaching one of these days (laughs) soon because she certainly would be fantastic at it. Did you exercise before losing weight or is this a new thing for you? Uh, You know what? I was, I was very active in high school and in university. So I played on sports teams. I rode my bike for fun. Um, um, I, I played soccer and volleyball in university, like not on, not on varsity teams, like my kids are, but just, you know, recreational sports. Uh, we went biking on the weekends, my husband and I, and so then it all, it all came crashing down basically. And, and once I started having the kids, it was just, you know, all, all I could do to get out for a little walk with them in their stroller or whatever. Yeah. How did you get your kids off dairy? Asks Adeline. Well, Adeline, it's a great story, actually, because what I did is uh, I have a vegan friend here in who I've been friends with for 30 years, and she told me to just accidentally keep running out of regular milk. And so that's what I did. I'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I I forgot to buy milk this week, but here I've got this. And then just keep trying plant milks until you find one that they hit, that that you hit on one that they like. And and then the the distance between buying real milk would would get bigger and bigger. And I'd buy a smaller and smaller thing. And and but then there was always the plant milk and nice and cold. It doesn't taste, you know, those aseptic boxes out of the, that you can store on the shelf don't taste very good unless you keep them in the fridge. So, you know, if they watch this, they're going to learn all the secrets. <laughs> we better not tell them that you are on. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, Stephanie would like to know if you would share your homemade cream cheese recipe that you make. Uh, Well, the base is um, soaked cashews. So you soak the cashews overnight in the fridge. Um, I don't think it was any particular recipe, but if you just Google like cashew cheese, then, um, it'll give you the base. Like it, I know it was water and cashews and lemon juice and probably asked for salt, but I would have used Benson's table tasty instead. Cause I don't use salt anymore. Um, and, and then at the bottom of recipes, they'll give you know, flavor profiles. So make a basil one, you could put this much of. And so, yeah, it's just a simple Google for a cashew cheese. Right. Miyoko Shinner has a wonderful book called Artisan Vegan Cheese. I've made that recipe before. It tastes just like cream cheese. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty close actually. Yeah. Did, during the last two, couple of years when you've been losing this weight, did you have to go to a regular doctor for any reason? And did they say anything to you? Did they encourage you on your journey? Did they ask you what you were doing? Did they notice? That you lost uh, 72 you know, I was, I, I didn't go specifically for myself during the pandemic. I did go, uh, with my kids, you know, when they had, uh, you know, pneumonia or whatever I was in the, in the doctor's office, but I think the doctor was pretty focused on whoever was sick rather than on me. And so it wasn't until this spring when I went to the family doctor for a full, full checkup that, that. I, you know, I got on the scale and yeah, I'm actually down 72 pounds from the last time that he had recorded my weight. And yeah, that's when he said to me that, that, uh, that he usually gets about two patients a a year out of a thousand that are actually able to do this. So was he impressed? Yeah, he was. And, you know, actually I didn't say too, he took my blood pressure and, you know, it was right after you had had Dr. C.E. Grimm on your show. And he's sort of one of the world foremost experts on, on blood pressure and sodium and such. And um, my, my blood pressure was 102 over 64. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> That's amazing. Layla says you're lovely. Where can she find you on social media? Oh, I'm not a social media person. 
I'm just a mom. I'm just, uh, you know, the, these interviews have been just, just to help you, AJ. I, I will just be slipping back into my regular life. And I've got, you know, friends that, that, I mean, I do go to, um, uh, a little group called feel fabulous over 40. I go there twice a week and, and, you know, we have like zoom calls and stuff, but, um, and oh yeah, every day I'm on your, I'm here, um, because I work with Jesse as a moderator here on your show. So, so if anybody wants to chat, I'm always in, well, I don't get here every day, but, but I'm over in the chat to say hello for sure. Well, thank you for what you do. And thank you, Jesse, too. Mona says, are there any hotels if she decides to go to the conference? You stayed at a hotel, right? I did. It was it was a Marriott hotel. Um, so I'm sure the Sacramento has plenty of hotels. Yeah, there were there were lots of hotels. And I think even one lady stayed in an Airbnb. So so, oh, it might have been Element or something, Marriott, something like that. Mm. So um, Kira says, I'm 70 and worried that I will look a lot older from wrinkles from losing weight. Hmm. Well, I know Esther Loveridge was 72 when she lost. What did she lose? Like 140 pounds. She's on. She's on right now watching. Oh, is she? This is Mm -hmm. Esther's book, um, which is like daily. um, I brought this with me to to Mexico to get her to sign sign my book for me. (laughs) But, um, you know, she. I'll take wrinkles over the weight any day because I know how much healthier I am. So yeah, I got lots of wrinkles, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. I've got lots of loose skin on my tummy and my arms here. I got to get into weights, <laughs> but, but um, that's, I'd way rather be healthy and have my skin not look as good, you know? And I mean, I use moisturizer and, and stuff and try to stay, keep my face out of the sun and you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's kind of a, I don't know, it just seems to, to just to stay overweight because you don't want wrinkles doesn't sound like a legitimate no, not a good trade-off because, reason, you the know, health, health implications of, of staying overweight are, are desperate. Like I would, there's no way I would want to be in that position anymore. Yeah. Well, you look great and you're amazing. And yeah, I really think you should hang out the shingle and start coaching people. Many people have asked if you would be their coach, even just for the inspiration. Oh, that's very sweet. Thomasina, who's watching live and who I also met at Rancho said, I finally met Esther at Rancho and wow, what a kind and beautiful soul. So we know that Esther's watching. We'll have to get her back on the show uh, soon. Esther was the one person that at first didn't believe if it's in your house, it's in your mouth, but then she <laughs> finally succumbed and proved me right. So thank you. For that, Esther. And Esther will also be at the conference and I believe she'll be introducing Dr. John Scharfenberg, who's one of the speakers. So I hope you guys were inspired and consider joining the Reboot program. It starts next week. Susanna will be in it. A lot of our, actually all of our success stories this week are coming back. Renee, we had Lori yesterday, Sally the day before. We've got another wonderful coming up. Uh, Donna Sickler on Sunday. Karen Gaylor, I believe is on Saturday. So please watch these shows and be inspired. And are you going to be at the Dugathon on Sunday? I am. I don't know if I can be there for the whole thing because I, uh, on Saturday, we have 30 people here for a big engagement party. One of my, one of my sons got engaged at Christmas, so I will have out of town guests. So I will try to get there for at least an hour. Great. Thank you. Uh, Pam says, Suzanne is very inspiring. And I love this. Dave, who's a a man says thin and wrinkly wins out every time. (laughs) Thanks, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not, and you're not weekly. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, Suzanne. I really appreciate you doing this because I know it's a little bit out of your comfort zone, yet you do it very well. So, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really owe you a debt of gratitude, AJ. You- okay. Well, then come back to Rancho and let's hang out again because <laughs> now, now you have the ropes. I mean, like the first time is always the, you know, you're, you're new, yeah. but now you know exactly what I you know. want to do, you know? I know. I loved it. I loved it. I would really encourage anybody that's on the fence to just go for it. It was actually a wonderful, wonderful week. Right. And then we have three, three openings for next month. If you want to join, please email us at help at chefaj.com. Thanks, Susanna. Thank your family and your husband for being so supportive. Thank you. Well, you know, I, I wanted to ask you one more thing I should have before, but do you ever have slips and slides? And if you do, how do you get back on track? Because that seems to be a common theme among people that have some success and then they they yeah. can't get back yeah. on track. Yeah, 
it happens. I, um, I'm trying to think of what, like at Christmas, I, I thought, you know, there's all this good food around, not, not, not good, <laughs> all this bad food around. Yeah, all this but, pleasure trap food. All this mean. pleasure trap food. And, and I thought, you know what, somebody had bought some vegan chocolate. And so I had some vegan chocolate and, you know, I didn't feel good after that. I, I was all felt all lazy from the sugar hit. And, you know, when your body is kind of working more like a fine-tuned machine, like a really good engine, and then you put like really terrible gasoline in it, it's going to run poorly. And, and I don't like that feeling anymore. I, it, it's so subtle at first learning what it feels like to feel good. And now I don't want to give that up. I, I don't want to feel bad. Yeah. I think until people feel better, they don't know how bad they felt sometimes. I, I didn't know how bad I felt. I thought I was doing pretty good. I mean, you can see, you could see by my pictures, like I'm smiling in all my pictures and stuff like that, but you know, like all the struggles, like I was always too hot in the summer. Like in fact, my family was really worried about me going to Mexico because we saw one day it was going to be 36 um, Celsius, which is really hot. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Ah, you guys are lightweight. I'm from the desert. That is not hot. Trust me. Oh, it was man. not hot at all. At, there was not one hot day at Rancho. Oh, but compared to here where I oh, am. You're from the tundra. Yeah, it gets, you know, 30 Celsius is a really hot day here. And so, but you know, I never minded the heat at all. Uh, you know, I, we, I had to wear a sweater in the evenings and, you know, so it's all those little subtle things. I sleep way better because I don't, I don't drink anything with caffeine anymore, including, um, tea. I don't drink decaf either because it's still 25% caffeine. So I am completely herbal tea now based. And mm -hmm. so I sleep better. I thought that was like, you know, something that happens when you're in your fifties, you just don't sleep well anymore. And it's not for me, you know, when I do my hour or half an hour of exercise every day and I eat really well and I stop eating early. I give myself three or four hours. I don't eat in the evening. Dinner is it. That's it. Then I'm done eating for the day. And I, so I sleep better because my body's not digesting yeah. into the night and just it all, it all works really well together. Yep. Uh, Jennifer says, Susanna, you look so pretty and happy. Esther said, nothing feels as good as this for people that do have a little snacks event. How do you advise them to get back on track? Just the very next thing, just yeah. make the next very fight. next. Absolutely. Yep. The very next thing. And, and you know what, that internal audience picture that I showed earlier, you'll hear them. It's, it sounds kind of corny or woo woo, but you'll hear it. You'll hear that. Yay. You did it. You know, and, and I just appreciate that feeling so much. Yeah. Well, you are really an inspiration and a light for us all. Thank you so much, Susanna. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Mm. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time for Melissa Sherlock. She's been on the show before. You've asked for her to come back and she's going to show you how you take simple staples that you already have in your refrigerator and make delicious meals. Take care, everyone. If you'd like to join me and Susanna and many other inspiring